Alright, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Rocket League News. And I know a lot of you guys are probably here just for the regional championship recap that did happen this week. Skip to the end if you're just here for that. But we got a lot of other stuff to talk about too. First up, before we get into the news, we had a big week for the channel guys. Big week. Gained a shit ton of subscribers. And I can't thank you guys enough. If you guys do enjoy, hit the subscribe button for more Rocket League news content. And let's get right into it. So I guess the biggest thing that happened, even bigger than regionals, is Scrub explains his reasoning for leaving Mouse. And I'm going to not read the entire twit longer that he posted, but I'm going to go over the, the main thing. The, the main reason. So a lot of people thought it was because of headset issues and not wanting to use a certain headset. But apparently, Scrub said that... The CEO of Mouse Sports dealt with him in a very unprofessional manner. Uh, the CEO of Mouse Sports refused to agree to the contract being active if his dad did not co-sign. Now, if you're in Europe or in America, you'd be like, all right, yeah, scrub 16. But in Scotland, once you're 16, you no longer have a legal guardian. That's just how it works in that country. And the organization decided to ignore that. So his dad really wasn't supposed to co-sign, but they did, thus they were breaking the law. And Scrub said that he had a lot of problems going forward with breaking the law, and he was always on edge and worried. And it looks like that we're still missing a little piece. How did he get out of the contract? Well, it looks like he did break the contract if the headset thing that I'd mentioned in the last video that everyone's talking about on Reddit, him not wanting to use a headset, uh, was the reason, then maybe he was using that as a way to get out of the contract because technically there was some illegal things going on in the background and Scrub didn't want any part of it or I didn't want any part of it anymore. This is what Scrub posted. Uh, like I said, there's still that one little piece of information that it, it seems like we're missing the the how did Scrub actually get out of it? What did he what did he do? He said he got out of it, but he didn't necessarily say how and but like Lethemir said, Scrub violated something on the contract, so I'm, so we're assuming that he purposely violated the contract to get out of it. And in other news introducing the Rocket League Spring series. Now, this is supposed to be like I think in place of RLCS Worlds. This is just a, re a regional thing. Obviously, because of coronavirus, we can't have a LAN, but this is going to be another online tournament, and the top four teams in North America and Europe will qualify for their respective regional uh, spring series. And then there's going to be open qualifiers for anyone. So if you guys want to check that out, I'll link that in the description. If you want to know more about the Rocket League Spring Series, I'll come out with a video on all the information about it later this week, going over it. So stay tuned for that. And then, remember when I mentioned Rocket League will be at the Olympics? Well, the Intel World Open was postponed until 2021, as the Olympics was as well. It, obviously, everything's just being postponed, everything's being cancelled nowadays. So, it, it's no surprise that it's not happening, since it would have had to be a LAN event. And I mean, if the Olympics aren't happening, then IWO can't happen either. Next up in the news, we have NRG Jazer. And that's right, Jazer just signed on to NRG as a content creator. NRG just tweeted this out. Please welcome Rocket League content creator at NRG Jazer. So yeah, real cool stuff with that. Not much else to say on that, but now Jazer will be representing NRG in his YouTube videos and on his streams. Next up, Rocket League with a new all-time concurrent player count. On, I think it was March 15th, the day of the Season 14 update, Rocket League reached 500 thousand concurrent players which is massive it's, it's it's incredible it's the biggest we've ever seen M most people thought that we'd never get more than 200,000 there was a time when 100,000 players was big for this game and now we've just reached 500,000 and during the whole corona incident we've been averaging 300,000 minimum like uh, it blows my mind it really blows my mind this game is taking off right now coronavirus has actually done more for gaming than anyone else it's kind of funny but I guess it's kind of a good thing now that the entire population of the world's locked their doors, barricaded their windows, and strapped on their dodos. Everyone's just in playing Rocket League. You wonder why it's getting so big. Why not other esports? But Rocket League is just such a friendly game for anyone to enjoy that it's just being promoted everywhere. You can see right here on this Reddit post, Rocket League is suggested as an alternative to sports in Australia's national news. So Australia's national news, the continent's news. They're suggesting Rocket League as an alternative, like an eSport to watch while sports aren't happening. Like so many people are telling people to go play Rocket League or go watch Rocket League. It's mind blowing. Of course, I'll, by the way, I'm going to link everything in the description that I've talked about. And now it's time to talk about the regional championships. That's all the major news that happened this week. 
Let's get into it. So the first match of the day for North America was Sonics NRG. NRG swept the Sonics. Nothing much to say about that. Sonics moved down to the lower quarterfinals. But who are they playing? It's either Ghost or Cloud9. Well, Ghost beat Cloud9. Ghost smacked Cloud9. Atomic. Atomic popped off. Let's say Atomic looked like the best player in the world in that game. Then it was Atomic versus the Sonics again. Sonics did nothing. Atomic just laid down the pipe on three bots all game. Nothing much to say about it. They didn't win a single game on the day. They went 0 for 8. And Atomic just 1v3'd them all day. Then we move up to G2 vs NRG. It was game 5, just what everyone wanted, and G2 took it in f 7 games. Space Station vs Ghost. Space Station smacked Sonic, or smacked Ghost. And it's crazy because Ghost were playing like the best they ever have. So for Space Station to beat Ghost just shows you how good all three of these players are. Like, just incredible. But then you might be wondering how good was G2 playing compared to Sp Space Station and Ghost. Well, G2 4 owed Space Station. So j j just the skill difference when these teams are on. When G2 is on, they are probably the best team in the world. And G2 are the North American regional champions. Now let's go into Europe. Started off with Team Reciprocity versus Mouseport. Team Reciprocity pulled a Sonics and did absolutely nothing all day. They got swept by Arju. I mean, Mouse Sports. That was a joke because Arju carried. And then Veloce versus FC Barcelona. FC Barcelona actually took it. They played very well. And then they stomped Wreck as well in the next match. Uh, it was all, all in the back of Ronicky, honestly. Flakes had some really good defense as well as Devo, but they were feeding Ronicky the ball, letting him do his thing, and that's why they prevailed so much. But yeah, Wreck won one game. Wasn't even close. Not even. Uh, Vitality versus, or then it was Dig versus Mouse Sports. Very, very close match. Arju almost took down Dignitas. Actually, in this match, they all play extremely well. But Dig prevailed, ended up being the better team. Then Vitality versus Barcelona. Vitality, I mean, they were just too good. Barcelona won game one, but, then, but at the end of the day, Vitality is just better. Then we have Dig versus Vitality. Surprisingly, Dig won. I mean, we all thought it would be close. I thought it would be game seven, but man, Dig takes it in six. Dig was playing lights out. Astro was playing lights out. Again, just doing things with the ball that we've never seen before. Shock and Astro won MVP of regionals. Shock also being the first rookie in Rocket League history to win regional championship MVP. And that's everything that happened this week in Rocket League. How fast did I get through this? T 10 minutes. All right, yes, let's go. I just don't want to render a 20 minute video. Because as you guys know, I upload my videos in 2K. And a 20 minute video means like three fucking hours of rendering. And it's actually the most annoying thing in the world when I want to use my computer that day. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Right before I ended this video, Reciprocity just shit out a bombshell on their Twitter. Team Reciprocity just released their entire roster. They are out of Rocket League now. I'll put it up on screen. This right as I was about to hit the render button. I mean, just as I was about to hit render, my phone notified me of this. So, basically said that it wasn't their day, and this is going to conclude our journey in Rocket League. So, looks like Shazette, Fruity, and Farah don't have a team anymore. And Jesse, but like, he's just a sub. Well, that's crazy. Okay, now that's everything. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, if you did learn something new, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.